Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 61 for Friday the 18th of December 2015. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos and that smiling dude right there, that's Kent. (laughs) How's it going, man? Man, oh my god. You said for Friday the 18th of December 2015. You know how long I've been waiting for this fucking day? Oh, god. Uh, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Man, yeah. I, my my head is full of clouds and cobwebs and shit right now, but yeah, it's yeah. okay. I, it's I'm in this like place of bliss. Gears right sl- slowly dying a slow death, <laughs> yeah. as opposed to quickly dying a oh. slow death. Yeah, well, it's yeah, it's 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 one of those comfortable, like you know, like, like what you hear about when when someone is freezing to death, where you just find this calm, and you just accept your fate and everything's okay. And you're numb. That's kind of no. where I'm at right now. It's just, ah, oh, it's like a zen. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? Sure, sure. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure where you're at, but I've had a. Uh, I've had about 12 hours to cycle through my Force Awakens thoughts. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Mine. <clears throat> mine are fresh. All right. Uh, so Luke and I just broke down a lot of the shit over the last probably 30 minutes but uh it's whew, yeah oh my god okay so uh real quick i just wanted to because we, we we're going to talk about force Awak- the force awakens uh we're going to spoil things we're not going to hold back we're just going to talk about it so if you're listening to this and you haven't seen it and you don't want to be spoiled go do something else um yeah <laughs> yes uh i finally reformatted my computer this week just want to mention that complete reformat apparently being uh being drowsy on percocet and trying to do updates <laughs> is not a good thing so <laughs> i did something Who'd that have I, thunk that yeah it's something i couldn't recover from and had to re- completely redo it so i'm starting it's a it's a fresh start it's great it's amazing and uh now for star wars man what'd you think <sighs> In, initial thoughts give, give me uh give me one word initial thoughts real quick one word? One word. I got my word. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I would have gone if with... I had just one. Yeah, that, just... That, that's, that's it. Um, I, I was going to go with a uh, classic. Classic. Because that's what I thought of the entire time I was watching it from the very get-go, with the exception of the fox uh, uh, trumpeting not being there. Everything just oh. found... just Just felt classic it just felt like the original trilogy it felt the way star wars is supposed to feel yeah yeah <laughs> that this would be where you talk it was strong in so many ways dude okay let me ask you this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. did you cry during the movie um at all like at all o- open or- tears cry or like welling up with tears cry because any I, of those no, no no tears ever fell but there were a few moments where where I was getting rather emotional. Yeah, um, I, I think I counted four. Yeah, I, think I counted four times. Some of them were just like the lump and yeah. maybe like a twitchy thing yeah, going yeah, on in my yeah, eye. Yeah. <laughs> but there was there was one thing, one one particular scene that we'll get to here in a little while that I saw coming about five minutes before it actually happened, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I got that lump and the twitchy thing happened in my eye and then the tears actually fell oh. and it probably the entire emotional event probably lasted about 15 possibly running into 20 minutes wow yeah. it was it hit me dude it was strong you know exactly what i'm talking about well well yeah the, the exact the, you, you're you're talking about the uh the thing that um that I had actually forecasted the one that I nailed, the one that I got exactly right, like could not have yeah, been well, more you correct. Didn't know, you didn't know who and by what means and all that, but I, I knew who in the event. I knew who I didn't know the gravity of who, but I knew who right. and I knew that. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, let's, 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 uh, let's start from the very beginning, man. Um, 
the the uh, the title crawl. <laughs> um, it, 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 it in classic Star Wars fashion, it looked like a twelve year old wrote it and was trying to summarize a story that they had heard a year pre- previous. Um, it, it was not an, an elegant writing. Well, what, which which of Tell me which one of the Star Wars movies is. That's uh, like, n- I, none of them are. That's what I'm saying. It was immediately classic. Oh, okay. Yeah, it okay. was immediately all classic. Right. It was, all right. All right. It, I thought you were criticizing it. I no, was like, yeah, no. Yeah, it, yeah. it was it was it's that exactly that comfortable that. feel of of oh come on this is the sh- this just reading it you're like this is gonna be so shitty this is uh, the, I'm uh, no. I'm I'm already <laughs> no. gonna be fucking let down because the story if, if this is all there is to the story and then of course that's like. That's like saying, man, it's all right. And then you walk in there, and it's like, oh my God. It's like perfectly setting you up to be amazed after that point. Yeah, well, okay. Initially, all right, the, the Star Wars in your face and the crawl begins. Yep. Like, dude, goosebumps all over me. There was, it was one of those moments with the, you know, the lump in the throat and the, the eye twitchy thing happening. <laughs> like, it was, it was magic. And then as soon, like, First thing it says, and I don't remember the words exactly, because you might because you've seen it twice. But Luke Skywalker has disappeared. Yeah, it's like the first thing that it says. Yep. And I was like, ah, oh, this is excellent. We're already <laughs> learning. One of the questions that I had going into this is being answered immediately. This is great. This is uh. great. <laughs> oh my god. Man. I yeah yeah okay. And then and then it cuts into uh, it cuts into. The old man, which apparently, like, he's... I don't even know who he is. I don't remember his name or anything else. I, I don't remember him from lawyer, lawyer at all. But apparently some people do. And, uh, um, yeah, going into him with the whole beginning scene with... Uh, what the hell is the pilot's name? Poe? Poe Dameron. Yeah, with Poe and uh, getting that whole scene going. Saw the X-Wing there. That was great. With the... Uh, BB-8. The BB-8. Getting loaded up into the X-Wing and... Um, yeah, that that whole that whole first scene was was awesome. Um, yeah, man. Okay, so yeah, same same thoughts with the old man. He felt like I should know who this is. Like, yeah. who who is this guy? Like he he <laughs> felt so familiar, but not at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, who is this guy? Yeah. But he was obviously familiar with the people that we're familiar with. Mm-hmm. Like when he was talking about the general, when Poe was talking about the general, and he was like. Well, I tend to refer to her as royalty. Yeah, she's royalty like, to me or oh, whatever. Like, oh, oh, they're yep. talking about Leia. Like, he knows Leia. Like, yeah. He was immediately familiar to us yep. as the audience, collectively. He was familiar to us, but who the fuck is this guy? Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. When we got home, I, I pulled up IMDb and I looked up the character name. And it's, no, like, n- nothing. I, I blank. Yeah. No idea who this guy is. So I think I think he was just... Like made up and thrown in there for this movie, <laughs> but then again, I don't know. There's some there's some new books that have come out over the last couple of months that are that are part of the official canon. So I don't know. Maybe 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 he's there. Maybe he's already established. I don't know. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. There there are a lot of books and things like that that we're just not up to speed on. So. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think of BB-8? Like, what what is your feel of BB-8? Um. I. I think BB-8 is a great uh, 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 revision of what R2-D2 was in the original. He's he, he, the the droid is 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 human in its mannerisms. Um, it, it it the way that it acts is still you know it, it like it it just has that that certain attitude about it that R2 had in the original trilogy. Um, yeah, yet a little bit different. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The same basic, almost like, like a uh, like a younger version of R two, like a, a a teenage version of R R two. Yeah, I can go with that. So you know, I I was kind of worried that I wasn't gonna like this droid. Mm-hmm. Partially, maybe because of like loyalty to R two. Yeah, like he's R 2s replacement. I'm supposed to just fucking love him. Like, yeah, fuck you. But see that but no man. E- I, even that got squashed for me when you realized that. BB-8 looks up to R2 like we look at R2. Like, R2 is like the classic. Like, you don't fuck with R2. 
Yeah. You know, and he be, literally and... looks up to R2. <laughs> <laughs> and figuratively. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I, I do. I love BB-8. I'm, I'm, I'm a convert. I, I, I love him. He's yep, great. Yep. Um, okay. So, uh, I, I don't think we need to go scene by scene through the movie, but let's just hit no. some of the, some of the big points. Um, uh, <laughs> What what did you feel about uh, about Finn when they you know all the stormtroopers come out and there's this one stormtrooper that's kind of like looking around like what the hell's going on as opposed to just following orders? Um, it I don't know, man. It okay. It, it felt a little clunky at first because I I felt like all of the stormtroopers cut like coming off of the the trans troop transport or whatever. Mm-hmm. They all just felt like. Who what like what are they doing? Like they all just felt inexperienced, I mm, guess. Mm. Like Finn even said later in the movie that this was his first mission. Yeah. So I'm thinking it was his entire unit's first mission. Could have been, yeah. Uh, I mean, that, they seemed like sense. they just came off of that thing like, um, I guess we point this way and shoot, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But it was but it was interesting how they how they pulled this off where I immediately knew which one was Finn. Yeah. Like immediately, even before he even got be, marked with the, with yeah. the bloody hand, um, it's like, oh, this is. I'm pretty sure that's Finn. Th- that was the, that was know, a the, stark difference in the original trilogy. Anytime you saw the star or the stormtroopers, they were. I mean, they might have been androids. Yeah, you know what like, I mean. And, they, and there was no distinguishing. Because, between, yeah, they, they were. There was. They were. It was a very mechanical movement every single way that you went, which feeds into the lore of you know the the clones and everything else and and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've got something on that though. Oh, okay. Rebels, the cartoon Rebels, in the it was either the most recent one or no, 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 no. It was like two or three episodes back, I guess. Uh, so like prob- probably about a month old episode. Mm-hmm. They, the the core group of Rebels, meet up with some of the original clone troopers from the Clone Wars cartoon, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and. They pointed out, they, they were very specific to point out that after the Clone Wars ended, they ended the clone program and started recruiting people, like regular people, non-clones. Mm. So in so what we know of as stormtroopers from the original trilogy, mm-hmm. they were not clones. Mm. Okay. okay. Well, some of them might have been, like there might have been some holdovers, it might have been the, the, the remnants. bulk of that army was just regular people. Well, there, there, but either way, there was a, a definite difference in the, me- the mechanics um, of the, the stormtroopers versus the, the new ones, um, where it wasn't, it, it didn't feel as regimented. It felt more, more human to start with from the very get go. Right. Um, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Go ahead. Where, where were you going? <laughs> um, <laughs> My brain's in like seven thousand different places right now. It's in a galaxy far, far away. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and not a long time ago. Right no, now, right now, <laughs> right now, just far away. It needs some Cards Against Humanity magic to to bring it all together instantaneously across all space and time. Um, so, if if you go from that to you know Finn F N two one eight seven, sure sounds good. It's close. I, you've got most of the digits. Looks, I don't think that's the exact number, but you got most of the digits right. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Actually, I, well, no, I, I wrote did it you down. say two one eight seven? I yeah. think it was two one eight seven. Yeah, I think so. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah. going from that to where him not shooting and then getting on on the uh, back on the on the the transport ship and going back, um, that whole thing right there, like immediately you knew. Ugh, what the hell? Oh, I know what's going on. I don't know exactly what's going on. <laughs> there we go. Yep, that did was you amazing. Fix it? I did. I did. <laughs> there we go. We're good. Um <laughs> Moves Man Lucas says, hashtag still in beta. Yep, see, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I tried a new method of recording today and, and it backfired. Um So uh you knew immediately that that was even if you hadn't seen the previews, there was a definite feel that that, that he was a main character. He was someone to watch. He was some someone to keep track of, and uh, uh, you know, you had a, a, something to him. You know what I mean? Um, 
how about uh oh shite, I can't remember her name. The the stormtrooper in the 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 silver outfit. Captain Phasma. Sure. Gwendolyn Christie. That was a disappointment. Yeah, yeah. I was expecting We saw about as much of her in the trailer as we did in the movie. Yes. Yes. I was hoping to see more what of her. What the fuck? Yeah, was, and then what happened to her? It's like they captured her, they used her to take the shields down and then Yep. Then what? Yeah. Like there was no mention or scene of her at I, all. I I think that. I think she will recur. I think she'll be back. Uh one, I think so too, you, but they, you like get, they didn't show like a mass exodus away from the of uh Star Killer Base, I think is what it was yeah, called. Yeah, but but at the same time, you know there had to have been some because the general, they're not just going to have the general just die. And Kylo Ren, you're, well, he's, the he's, general, the general got away. See, like they showed him leaving. And then, then Kylo Ren, you know he's he's not dead. You know, right, right. So right. there's going to be some others, and with the with the planet sized Death Star, because it's essentially what it was. Um, it's not going to be a matter of, uh. You're not gonna be able to see everybody leaving on the one track where it's showing like the the X the X wings is like that coming away. Other oh, ships like all the, eight of them. Yeah, if if the other ships are going on the other side, you're not gonna see them anyway. You know, so um, yeah, I I I fully expect to see True. her again yeah. in in future. Yeah, I do, I do too. I hope so. Anyway, I mean, come on. Yeah, like it's she's gonna make a badass action figure, but like as a movie character, like what? Oh a fail. man, we, let's let's God not let's it, not get into the into the 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 video game slash marketing aspects of this fucking movie yet. Oh jeez. Um, oh, <laughs> let's let's yeah. stick with the story, punk. Um, okay, so we go from there, and uh, <laughs> Poe Poe Durgan or whatever his name was, Dameron Poe Dameron, sure, whatever. He uh, he didn't seem I I I wasn't emotionally invested in any way, shape, or form with him at all, like ever. There was I like never the a sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. The whole asking. So, do you talk now? Do I talk? How does this work? <laughs> yeah. How you know? does this work? <laughs> um, there, there was a human side of him, but it, it didn't. You know, it, I I don't know what I don't know what role he was supposed to fill for me in the movie. You know, I this understand is, okay, his role in the movie. I, this is what I I think of of Poe Dameron. He was established as a smartass and a like pretty much the most badass fighter pilot that the galaxy's ever ever seen right because goddamn the dude was a badass fighter pilot and he had incredible an incredible dynamic with finn and the the little bit that he interacted with ray those three characters are going to be the core moving forward you think so, so? episode eight and episode nine those three characters are going to be like the han Han, Luke, Luke and Leia, Leia of <clears throat> the the next movies, and I think they were just kind of just okay. Here here's this guy. This is kind of a, what he's like a little bit, and then we're really gonna get to know him and love him and or love him or hate him, whatever. But we're really gonna get to know him in episode eight. That's yeah. my prediction. Uh, yeah, I hope so because he just seemed he, like I said, I wasn't invested at all. I wasn't. Yeah, I, you yeah. know, it just it. Yeah, didn't didn't do anything. For <laughs> and then him. how about okay? How about him like dying or whatever? And then he just oh there oh no there he is there yeah. he is yeah that so and then so, they just kind of like so there, there's away, like, there's some there's some there's some continuity problems in the movie okay if you want to really get into into that aspect of it okay so Poe dies then undies all right fine <laughs> uh, Han and Chewie just just happen upon the fucking Millennium Falcon 10 minutes after it takes off. Um, yeah, and then they just happen onto a place where Luke's recovered lightsaber is. R- yeah, they just happen to head to, to, to that place. W- where, um, you know, and like there's there are there are several leaps of faith in this fucking yeah, movie. Yeah, incredibly convenient things. Yeah. 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 It, it, well, you know, but, but it's the Force. It's, you know, uh, the Force yeah, let them... It, these places. Uh, I don't. I don't like just to say that's just such a cop out. It's such a bullshit cop out. Um, I know. I know. I was. I was being half sarcastic when I. So said what do you? What do you think about Han coming back? About Han coming back? Yeah. About him well, showing up on the Millennium Falcon and. Oh my God! Dude, okay. Every time, every time a, a character th- that I already know and love came onto the screen, 
To include the Millennium Falcon. That's a character. Which, okay, so this time, I, there's, I'm going to cut you off real quick. This is the first time I feel the Millennium Falcon was given its due as a character. In in the others, it was it was a it was a set, it was a prop, it was a thing that existed as part of Han and Chewie. This time, it was actually given its own personality, its own. Yeah. yeah. It it was its own character. It was a named character in this movie, as opposed <laughs> yes, to okay. just a prop. And I I, wanted, I, yeah, I, I, okay. I was very happy about that. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. It was given yeah. its due. <clears throat> so, as I was saying, when it, whenever a character that I knew and loved every time came onto the screen it, it was like you know heart fluttering like i yeah. was just like oh 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 god it's han and chewy or oh god it's leia like oh oh my god like yeah. I, I had these little girl fucking moments all throughout <laughs> this movie so yeah amazing badass and and, so, and i think so i loved how they were introduced the only one that i okay so oh man i don't know when, if when the mil- video feed froze or mine is probably hit or it's probably mine because no, you're fine. He is hosting the video. So, uh, yeah, interesting. So go back to video, dude. Oh, hey. It's not even giving me an option to go back to video. Yeah, here we go. Okay, <laughs> there it should be coming back. Yep. Okay. Am I back? Yeah. <laughs> God, I <laughs> fucking hate the internet sometimes. Skype. All right. This adjust. is why we hey, went wait, to wait, Google wait, wait, in the first place. Shut, stop, Skype stop, 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 stop. Adjust your mic. Oh. Because you are Skype. blowing out all the shit. Fucking Skype. How are we doing now? Yeah, you're fine. Goddamn Skype, man. <laughs> this is why we went to Google Hangouts. Right. Because Skype does this dumb shit. Yep. So, um, how about the introduction of the characters? To include the Millennium Falcon. Uh, now you're froze. Uh, <laughs> was I froze or was I... <laughs> or were you just in there with your fucking mouth open like a complete douche wallet? <laughs> just sitting here agape. Um... <laughs> Okay, so I I assume then that you didn't get uh, what I was saying about the characters coming onto the screen. No, 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 no. I got okay. you talking about how you were cutting out. <laughs> okay, yeah. I was I was saying any any time a character that I already knew and loved came onto the oh, screen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that part. Little okay, girl, little I, girl yeah, moments. I, yes, that's yes. exactly. And um, and then yeah, I asked part, about part. Uh, like uh, how the, how the Millennium Falcon was introduced. Like, oh no, we can't use that piece of junk. Yeah. Oh, dude, that was that was a surprise when she was like, he because Finn was like, "How about that one?" She's like, "No, that's a that's basically." She said, "That's bas- that's a piece of shit." Yeah. And then they went to the the one that's garbage that got blown up, and she's like, "Oh, well, back to the piece of shit." And then it, oh my god, it's the Millennium Falcon. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah that that oh, one dude, was, that one was a surprise. Yeah. That and then was, every oh. other every other introduction of an old character was like known there was an anticipation to it when han came on right. han and chewie come on because we had seen it in the in the preview um the same scene the same angle everything else and he comes on and says you know chewie we're home you know? oh and i called it didn't i like two weeks ago i think is when i when we were talking about this and i said i think they somehow lost their ship and they get back to their ship yep. and that's when they say chewie we're home mm-hmm mm-hmm and I nailed it. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and then Leia, of course, that was, there was so much buildup on that. You ha- you knew she was about ready to walk out on there. If she didn't, it would have been more of a surprise because then you would have seen yeah. the soft side of Han, like that, that desperate, loving man fighting with his, with his shitty self. Um, and then no payoff for it would have been totally more interesting than what, than what we got. But then I can't argue with having Leia on the screen either. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, turn on your video, by the way. Um, but yeah, why? I I actually that was one of the scenes that I got a little bit choked up when uh, when Leia appeared and mm-hmm. then their initial interaction. Yeah, that got me a little bit. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah not so much. I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think because I, I kind of assumed so many things going in. Not, not even like you know had, had, visions of it or, or you know projections or anything else. I just assumed certain things going in that. Uh, Whenever things were going on screen, I was I just kind of I was still staying ahead of it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. See the the whole the whole separation of Han and Leia uh, that that took me off guard. Like, I, I never would have thought that. I like I I figured that was a given. Like I <laughs> I in my mind that was a given. Like I just knew they were they they couldn't be together still. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't it know. Never even entered my mind of possibility. Uh, now, yeah. Maybe it's just because I read so much EU shit that where they were you know happily man and wife forever and ever gotcha and yeah yeah slight maybe skew. that's it i don't know but it just it never once entered my mind that they wouldn't still be together gotcha um what about their their child <sighs> holy shit man <laughs> i didn't see that one coming really I thought Ray was going to be now. Okay, the only time that it was put into my head that he might have been their child uh-huh. is when we were throwing around the the possibility that that Ray and Kylo were brother and sister. That's the only time it entered my head. But I was like, no, fuck that. That's no, no. That's already been done. They're not doing that. So I threw it away, completely threw mm. it away. But I still held on to Ray is going to be the daughter. Mm. Well, <laughs> I was wrong. It's the I, fucking opposite. I I didn't predict it. Like I I wouldn't. I didn't go in guessing it. But as soon as it happened, it it was not surprising. It was just like, yes, that's 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 where we should go with that. That's <sighs> that's where the story should be. Yeah, but man, when when that reveal, like saying that oh you know our son, blah blah, blah mm-hmm. going by Kylo Ren now. What the fuck? And I was just like, oh. Oh my god! <laughs> mm. Oh my god! You, you know what it was? I think it's because when when you have the scene where Han is watching Kylo Ren carry uh, Ray up the the up to the ship, yeah. the way that he looked at him, I knew like that was like oh, oh no no no! We already knew at that point. Did we? We already knew that at this at that point. Yeah, yeah. Because when when he saw Kylo carrying her, we knew that Han was seeing. His son, because he oh, immediately that's right. got that's back right. to because they announced. He's like, "Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw him." Yeah, because it, it was, I, it was my father, Han Solo, whatever else, when he's talking to the, the big monstrous hologram dude. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, the super uh, mega overlord guy that's clearly cut out of a fucking video game. <laughs> Great leader Snoke or Supreme Leader Snoke or sure. something Leader Snoke. Yeah, yeah, that guy, that guy. Um, I can't wait till we see him in person because he's gonna be like three feet tall. Like, yes. yes. <laughs> totally got fucking small dick syndrome right there. Yeah, um, my, my first my first impression was like, are they really using a giant? Is this guy a giant? What the fuck? Mm. And then when they showed that it was a, a hologram at the end of the conversation, I was like, oh, okay. So uh, so here's um, here's a point that uh, that I think Brian Brushwood brought up earlier tonight. Uh, d- did you put together the fact that Kylo is is a uh a, a, a a mixture of um, of uh, shit, Skywalker and Lando. Lando. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you lost me. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those questions. Like, how, how are they mixing the how, how are they mixing names and, and putting shit together and, and everything else? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not getting the Lando reference, but um, okay. Oh, 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 all right. Okay. Sp- all right. <laughs> I gotta say this. All right. Do you know who Greg Grunberg is? Greg Grunberg. Yeah, actor. Can't say that okay. I do. Did you Did you watch Heroes? At least the first season of Heroes. Way Most back of in the it. day. Okay. Do you remember the the kind of chubby guy that oh no it's you know now, now now i'm fucking my own self up because it wasn't oh yeah that guy the guy that was a pilot yeah um it was a uh, uh uh not lando um ah just fucking it's it's now it's fucking with me it's like actually messing with my head all right well think about it no um but <laughs> but no all right so greg grunberg i thought 
for sure, because he turned into a fucking fat ass for this movie. I mean, he was always kind of chubby, but he was a goddamn fat ass in this movie. I thought for sure that he was going to be a Porkins. I, I thought for sure his last name was going to be Porkins. Really? <laughs> and it, it wasn't. It fucking wasn't. I was a little disappointed because I, we stayed and watched all the way to the end of the credits because I always read the credits. Skywalker and Solo. Kylo. Oh. There we go. See, now I'm, I'm actually putting the math together the way it's supposed to be put together. Kylo. Interesting. Okay. Skywalker and... and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that is kind of an interesting mishmash. Huh. Huh. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I, I was happy to see him flying the, flying the X-Wing. It was like this familiar face that I, I knew, but I couldn't place until you just mentioned it. Um. So yeah, that was that was that was interesting. Did I lose you again? No, no. Oh. Um, okay, so <sighs> all right, let's get to it, man. Let's get to the real the real shit. The the one that the scene that dude there were there was there was water coming out of my face <sighs> when Han confronted his son, whose name was. Ben, by yeah. the way. Ben, I like that part. Okay, I I got I got mixed emotions on that. I, I God, I saw it coming so so much. Like it just made so much sense. That his name was Ben? No, that 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 the, they were gonna face off like that on on the ramp over a huge Oh no 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 that no 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 I saw that coming. Okay. That's why I started getting choked up five minutes before the event. Like but as, as soon as name, as soon as Kylo Ren started walking out on, on that on that trestle or whatever. The trestle. Right. right. So somebody always falls off of a high place in a Star Wars movie. It's, <laughs> it's just always. um but no, but naming him Ben yeah? was an interesting choice. Because that makes sense. The expanded universe fans, okay. The the I, I don't know if you've come across any EU truthers out there that are just goddamn fucking pissed off about the expanded universe not being a thing anymore because they've invested so much time in reading 648 books or whatever, and then to be told that fuck you, it doesn't matter anymore. There's some people that are fucking pissed and refuse to accept the new canon. Good. Well, the, yeah. Who gives a shit, right? But. <laughs> Ben Skywalker is the name of Luke's son in the okay. expanded universe. Okay. So them taking the name of that character and giving it to Han and Leia's son instead. So is now, like it's like a bitch slap to the EU truthers. Would that would that lend credence to or from uh, the, uh, the 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 theory that Ray is is Luke's daughter? If they re I don't, I if they don't know. renamed it really give me a clue either way. Well, if they renamed <laughs> uh, <laughs> strengths in the chat room. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Strength, yeah. Strength says on the bus home from the movies, I was tempted just before getting off to turn around and shout, "Han Solo is killed by his son," and Luke Skywalker doesn't say a word. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I walked out of the theater. <laughs> on that note, I walked out of the theater, and of course, there's a line seven miles long of, of people seeing the next showing. Mm -hmm. And I walked out, and I was I was shaking my head. I was like, I was like, man, I couldn't believe it really was Jar Jar. And then, <laughs> uh, 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 I I did I did let slip because uh, you know I stayed in the same theater because we only have one one theater at our theater, you know, yeah, one, one screen. screen. Okay. Um, I stayed in there until the next group started coming in because I had back-to-back -back tickets. Oh, uh, right. To make right. sure I saved my seat because I got that seat right in the middle of the theater, you know, like right vertically and horizontally, perfectly in the middle of the theater. Um, and uh, I did let it slip a few times like, ah, oh, all those people that bought those BB-8 droids are going to be, you know, little toys are going to be pissed off when he's not in any more movies. Like this, <laughs> like... How pissed off are you going to be when you go have to Throwing go buy out the, the swerve spoilers? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The spoiler swerves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's great. So, so, uh, so Han Solo confronts Kylo Ren, 
This is the point where you got yeah. choked up. Yeah, yeah. And you get the tease that Kylo... But well, well, we got the tease earlier in the movie where he's kind of conflicted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's the opposite of Anakin, where he was like a good guy, but he was conflicted with these dark side feelings or whatever. Right. Well, he's the... Kylo is the opposite, where he's a dark side bad guy, but he keeps getting these like glints of light and he wants to go back to his family and like fuck all this shit yeah and so he's actually like basically praying to his dead grandfather to show him the way so that he can stay on the dark side yeah and i thought that was a bit odd too but you know okay i'll, I'll give you it that. was yeah it was it was i don't know it was something new, it was a new idea it was an in- interesting twist there yeah but on on the catwalk or the whatever whatever it was you called it um <laughs> When Trust Han me. confronts him, he's like, "Hey, you know, me and my, me and your mom want you to come home, but uh, like, just fuck all this." Let's just, and, and know, then they let's they just look- they, uh, they they tease it with with him getting emotional and talking about how he's got yeah, all this and he pain says, and, "I need you to help me." Yeah, as soon as he, he said that, I was like, "Ah, that, that confirmed it." I was like, "There's no yes, there's right. no glimmer there's no of hope. way Han's getting out of this." Yeah. yeah, and so then he he takes out his lightsaber, and you think that. Well, I don't know that anybody actually thought this, but you're supposed to think, I think, that he's handing the lightsaber to Han. It's like, you know, hey, you know, help me end this and, you know, you take the lightsaber because that's part of my evilness or whatever. Yeah. But, of course, he doesn't. He actually just holds on to it and then he turns it on and <laughs> something very bad happens. There. Yeah. And <laughs> like you, don't, you don't even oh, want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't. I want to like, get it out of the way and let's move on. Okay, so this is that a good. Was, this is a good. A good point to bring up the fact that um, I really think that uh, they they lowered the power level of these lightsabers because they used to cut through metal and cut through this and cut through that, and this time they were they were cutting through trees, but they weren't cut through stone or body parts or, or people yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it was just like okay well you need a lot tr- of people got cut crane crank up the amperage here buddies uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah their batteries are getting low yeah like years. you know you need some duracells in there get rid of them fucking ever eddies you know um so yeah i, I thought that was a uh, that was that was a, a thing now <laughs> so moving on beyond that okay so they go back uh uh Leia sends Han to his death because Han would have avoided the whole situation if it was just him. He died because he was serving his wife. You know, weird stuff happens, right? Um, do you not okay. agree with that? Like, he would have avoided that situation had Leia not prodded him towards it. Probably, yeah, because she said, bring our son bring home. Bring our son home, yeah. So, yeah, she she inadvertently or directly, however you, want to, however you think about it, she sent him to his death. So I thought that yeah. was that was a bit strange. Um, it was it was nice to so- show that Leia, you know, the force sensitivity in Leia. Um, yeah, she definitely felt his death. Yeah, like she knew. You know what I mean? Because um, yeah. it's weird that she's Luke's twin sister. He's got all this, you know, this ability and these powers, and everything else, and she's never demonstrated any of it. You know, oh, except like, for the feelings and being able to like feel things or hear things. Right, the right. Force. She's she's but been you know be, being empathic. You know, that's about it. Right, um, right, exactly. But uh, for it, you know, for it to to show her like that, that was you know that was interesting. Um, and then they send Ren off to find Luke. Who? The, the, sorry, the, they send Ray off to find Luke. Yeah, <laughs> you were combining two names. Hey, whatever. Uh, yeah, with with Chewbacca. And uh, yeah. R2-D2. And that, that was interesting to see to see Ray take over Han's spot at the helm of uh, the Millennium Falcon. Um, that was kind of, a, kind of a nice little moment there, you know what I mean? I, I don't know what the, what the average lifespan is for Wookiees on Kashyyyk or anything else, but they, uh, but, you know, it's not like... <laughs> yeah. It, it's not like uh, uh, Chewie has any, any signs of slowing down. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, he was like in Star Wars, the, like the first one, Episode Four, I guess. He was said to be about two hundred years old. Well, not in the movie itself, but like in the supporting materials or whatever. Um, yeah, about two hundred years old. So I don't know. He's probably like what two fifty now or some shit. Uh, so who knows? Yeah, but yeah. Then one thing that I was actually disappointed about with Chewie 
was that when after Han died, I think he reacted appropriately. He fucking screamed in like emotional pain or whatever, and then fucking went ape shit on the stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. But then you know he collected himself. He fucking gathered up the kids basically and fucking got the fuck out of there. Right. But when they landed back on the planet and he carried he carried Finn to the stretcher basically mm-hmm. and set him down, and then Leia was coming over. How the fuck was that a, not a moment between Chewbacca and Leia? Han just died. Yeah. Is, it, her it, husband, but, his life, like hetero life partner, basically. <laughs> and Chewie and Leia loved each other. Like they hugged when they met back up. I, How was there not a fucking hug there? I, I think, uh, see, and I thought about that, but I really think that was a moment between... Um, Leia and Ray. Yeah, I, 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 that's I, how I justified it right, after the fact. Exactly, still, exactly. Well, that's because when I saw Chewie, it, when I watched it the second time, I went into it knowing that 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 occurred and thinking about that and the way that they, the way that Leia is going out there and you know the way Chewie is is interacting with you know with uh, 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 Finn and everything else, it really feels more natural than than I think you give it credit for. Um, well, see, my thing was you actually see in the same camera shot, you see Leia and Chewie pass each other. I would have been fine with it if they weren't in the same shot. And then I could have just imagined that, oh, they just didn't see each other or whatever. Right. And I would have been fine with it. But I there's a visual in my head of them on the same screen at the same time passing each other. And that, yeah. that kind of bothered me. But, uh, yeah, but Leia, uh, literally Leia is like looking ahead. She's already looking at Ray. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, start- and Chewie was looking down at the ground. I mean, I I get it, but yeah, it, I would have liked it if they weren't in the same shot, passing each other, because that just yeah. that felt odd to me. They should have fucking been holding each other and crying, you know. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I'd buy off on that one. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, it, so it and then wrong. and then the big reveal, and I called this one too. I called this one exactly. That uh, you would not see Luke until the very last scene of the movie, and I even I believe I even said I doubt he'll even have a speaking part. Like, <sighs> yeah, you beat me on that one. I thought he was going to appear about half to three quarters of the way through the movie, do some cool shit, and then he was going to die. I thought, I thought Luke was going to die because the pattern of the movies is the first of the trilogy, the wise Jedi master dies mm. toward the end of the movie mm-hmm. it was obi-wan and qui-gon yep the first movie of each trilogy so this one obviously it's luke i thought he was gonna die and then he would be a ghost ghost jedi for the next two movies yeah i was way off base on that yeah one. yeah i, I <laughs> yeah I, you nailed it you fucking nailed it yeah this, this is just one of those things like i and that wouldn't even like uh you know again i i didn't read any of the spoilers or anything else i didn't read any any of the the theories or anything else. That was just my gut feeling from, from seeing their, uh, their interviews and shit like that. Just the, 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 how they were talking about it and things like that. It just seemed to me like, first of all, Han and Luke were never going to be in the same scene together. I doubt that, that Mark Hamill and, and, uh, Harrison Ford were ever on set together. Um, Mm. in, except for the, the, the group photos and the group talking now, something else. Um, I seriously doubt they were even, close to each other but i knew ugh, i just knew luke was was going to be at the very end and i could have you know I, I was almost almost 100 percent positive that he would not even have a speaking part and i'm glad i nailed both of those um yeah oh man <laughs> I, I, th- I, kept I think waiting for it though when like that whole last scene mm-hmm. it was just i don't know was it 30 seconds or was it like an hour and a half i don't know I, I almost, honestly, I almost expected, okay, so so Luke has been on this, you know, looking at, at, the, at this Jedi temple for who knows how long. Like, who really knows how long they've been out there, right? Or he's been out there. Right. I was almost expecting, because I thought the movie was, like, going to be about two and a half hours long, not two hours and, like, six minutes or whatever. Um, no, so, it was like, it was two and a half hours, wasn't it? No. Um, so I was expecting it to be, like, considerably longer, like, another scene longer than what it was um okay either way and so i half expected luke to have gone mad 
Like when you know, I not until the not until she got there and she was going up the steps and everything else. But I half expected her to finally get somewhere and see something. And Luke, driven mad by his search for the truth behind the force and and why everything got screwed up, <laughs> having gone mad and actually attacking her. Oh yeah, I, I thought that would have been like holy shit. You know what I mean? Um, no, I wouldn't have liked that because like she. Yeah, okay, she's like super powerful powerful with the force or whatever, but she does not have a fucking clue how to use it. And he's like an aged Jedi master. Like the guru, he's literally the guru on top of the mountain. Mm. Yeah, he just I would just, have like broken her in half if, if it, that had been it depends on his mental state. I just, you know, I I, I, yeah. I could have seen something like that being like the, the final twist, like the one shit nobody wanted to talk about until you actually saw the movie, you know? Um, yeah. Okay, so so that's the review of the movie in, in generalities in the, in the big pieces. Let's get into some, uh, some of the specifics, like uh, the humor. What would you think about the level of humor in the movie? I, I liked it. it. It felt very much like like the originals, like... Well, uh, probably more specifically, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Probably actually more specifically, Return of the Jedi. It felt about the humor level of Return of the Jedi. Where I, it was like genuinely funny parts, but like, 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 like you wouldn't mistake this movie for a comedy, like at all. And it wasn't just random, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger style one liners. This was like a real quick setup, punchline, move on. Yeah, like good shit. Yeah, right. um, I I thought I, I thought they were they were genuine humorous moments. They weren't uh, overly overt. You know, they weren't like thrown in your face. They weren't like bam. Here's a funny part. You're supposed to laugh. Um, and it was well paced. It was it, there were there were just little hits here, there and there that just kept you yeah. in that lighter mood that you're supposed to be in Star Wars. That you're not supposed to be in this this dour like the 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 um. Episode one, two, and three, like the entire movie was just like, oh my God, I just want to slip my fucking wrist right now. <laughs> like everything is going so wrong. And, and you know, the the little bit of humor and the comic relief that there was, was it was just like it was forced out of you, you know? And this seemed very yeah, natural. Yeah. It was it was written into the characters, uh, into their personalities instead of into the mm. scene, you know? And uh, it just... Right, exactly. It, it felt yes. so much more ingrained in, 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 in uh, uh uh, natural than than uh, most of the movies. I, I'd say most of them, because even episode four had some spots where there was like a little bit of humor, and it was just like, yeah, but it quickly moved past it. Right. So three three things I want to point out real quick with the humor. I mentioned already Poe po Dameron. His character is a smart ass. He's mm -hmm. the funny guy of the group, right? I think his humor was spot on. It was it was appropriate. It was it. Sets him up as a character. Right. I liked it. Um, the interactions between Han and Leia specifically, there was humor there that harkened back to the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi humor mm -hmm, mm -hmm. interaction that they had together. Perfect, spot on. It, it, I loved, it was a, I loved it was a the great Han reward. It was a great reward for people that have seen the original trilogy. Absolutely. And BB-8 filled the R2-D2 role like almost to a T mm -hmm. when it comes to the humor and whatnot. It, it wasn't like Jar Jar, like in your face and lasting goddamn forever and making like making you want to throw up in your mouth kind of shit. It was the droids from the original trilogy humor, yep. you know, like he BB eight, I call him he, I guess he's a he, right? Droids uh, are he. That's what they refer to him in the movie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he, he was just like R2D2 in the humor role. You know, doing doing a little physical comedy and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but not overdoing it. I, I thought it was great. Right. So the the humor was spot on. Okay. Um, how about uh, the throwbacks? Throwbacks, as in, um, so my favorite one, my favorite throwback, and this is actually a, a throwback <laughs> to the first ep to episode one, not to the first episode to episode one, was when um, when Ray puts on the the fighter helmet. After she eats her meal, she puts on the fighter helmet and she's sitting there and she's like looking around 
and she's bobbing her inner yeah. the helmet's bobbing. And it harkened back to episode one when Anakin first puts on that helmet in the uh, the the, uh, the yellow I see starfighter that. Yeah, thing. I didn't th- I didn't think that at the time, but yeah, I, I, I did totally like that. immediately. It, it struck me back to that, and I was like. At first, I was like, they're not going to sit there and refer back to episode one like it was a good thing, right? They're, they're, this isn't going to be a tribute to episode one. <laughs> and that was one of the the very few references that far back, you know, to, to the episode one, two, three. But it was it was a genuine one that really, I don't know, it made me appreciate episode one more. <laughs> um, it was just, okay. it was, it was just sure. a qu- that quick hit that, that, you know, there's some symmetry here. There's some, you know... Anakin at the time didn't know about his force powers or anything else. The, the completely oblivious to it. Ray at the time didn't know she had any kind of force powers. Was completely oblivious to it. You know, there, there's there's some some linkage there. And that that one scene right there, it just it harkened that. And I I really enjoyed that part. Um, and then you got the the three D uh, holographic uh, chess game or whatever on uh, yes on the Millennium yes. Falcon. And I love yeah, there how, was a lot of the Millennium Falcon scenes that were like, oh my God, yes, that, that, right, that. right. But the, see, <laughs> see, a lot of them though were functional, like they were part of the story, you know. Whereas that wasn't necessarily part of the story; it didn't have a role At in all. the story. But it was, yeah. it was just a scene. It was just something thrown in there as fan service, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, that was and, total and it, it, it didn't distract. I, I saw a lot of people were distracted by. It. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe they did that. I couldn't believe that oh, they, if they didn't. Off. You know what I mean? It didn't detract Dude, it from anything. It lasted like fucking five seconds. It right. did not. In, like, I think other people were talking at the time and the conversation was mm-hmm, happening mm-hmm. and he was just fucking with it kind of almost in the background. Yeah. It was fine. Anybody yep. that has a problem with that particular scene can kiss my ass. Yeah. So there's, there's that. I, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was great. Um, and the video is frozen again. <sighs> son of a bitch. Fucking really. Yeah, I pretty much fucking hate Skype right now. Yes, Skype can kiss my ass. So, did you hear what I said? Speaking of kiss my ass, did you hear what I said uh, just before we got cut off? Yes. Um, yeah, anybody that has a problem with that fucking scene can kiss my ass. Yep. It did not detract at all. No. I think I think it added a lot more than it could have even possibly detracted. Um, now, uh, the the next thing was the uh, the lightsabers. I already already mentioned how they seemed like they were powered down. Um, I saw yeah. someone in the chat room yeah. earlier mentioned that it looked like they uh, you know the 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 fights didn't look overly choreographed. They look like yeah, people strength, were stumbling strength through. said, there. I really liked that the lightsaber fights didn't seem elegantly choreographed and looked more desperate and scrappy. Nobody yeah. had dueled with them for decades. Absolutely. Yeah. They they were all the fuck over the place. They were basically bashing each other. Yep. With without skill. And I, I did like that. That nobody felt the need uh, you know, JJ <laughs> Abrams and company, nobody felt the need to you know, the, the super flippy jump Perry, 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 kind of thing that the prequels were. Uh, no, which it made sense for the prequels because these Jedi have been training with lightsabers for centuries. And, right. Or now, what do you millennia, think about Finn actually. being able to use a lightsaber? Yeah, yeah. Um, so these kids just like, oh, here's a thing. Here, like, here's a stick. Now go hit the other kid with the stick. And oh, he's blocking with the stick. He's trying to hit you with a stick. Yeah, that's exactly what it felt like. So, so it didn't bother you that the Finn was using a lightsaber and uh, being halfway efficient at it. Well, he'd been practicing with it, but who? But he? Who is he dueling against? Nobody. No, I'm, I'm Finn. Oh, Finn. Oh, Finn. Oh, no, 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 no. That was fine. Yeah, that was fine. He I didn't really do much with it. He never, like. I was I was just glad that he he wasn't like uh, that he didn't try to embrace it and like suddenly I want to use this all the time now like he 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 used it as a last resort every single time that he used it you know yeah what I thought was fucking great was that it, the trailers led us to believe that Finn was the Jedi or the Jedi in training right total fucking swerve <laughs> it's actually Ray yep that was great that was fucking amazing i loved that part of it yeah um oh speaking of the trailers 
I would say probably 90% of what we saw in the trailers happened in the first 15 minutes of the movie. Yeah. That was, oh, oh. Yeah, that was great. and and uh, yeah, okay. So so let's go to the trailers then. The uh, the fact that the the we were led to believe that you know when they were flying around on on uh, Jakku, that uh, it was Han Solo flying the Millennium Falcon, all being all crazy and shit with it. That was awesome. No. That was awesome. That was complete misdirection. Loved it. I also yep. love the fact that when Ray was flying the Millennium Falcon, she actually used and I, and I don't think she did this intentionally. I don't you know. Of course you're getting real meta into the the character of mindset and shit like that but sure. um she used the sand as a way to drift and cut speed on one side in order to make a really sharp turn um right before she went into the uh into the the star destroyer like <laughs> yeah the little yeah, yeah. shit like that like you know they, it wasn't just bouncing along or whatever else like she was she hit it and it, it actually started curving the uh the the, the trajectory of the Millennium Falcon and set her up perfect to go up. Yeah, it was, I really thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh, it was great, man. Just, yeah. Like, I, when, when, when the fuck is the next showing? Like, I need, I need to go watch it again. <laughs> like, dude, I'm not kidding. I'm probably going to see this movie about, oh, I don't know, <laughs> 70 or 80 more times in the theater. Mm. <sighs> All right. Um, so good. And, uh, what did you think about the character development of both Finn and Ray? Like from start to finish. Okay. Well, overall I liked it. When we first meet Finn, he's this bumbling stormtrooper who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing and then obviously he's having a stormtrooper with a conscious crisis. Yeah. Right out of the gate. And you know, that was cool that and that's kind of what I I guess what I expected based on what we out of all the shit in the trailers. The most spot on shit we saw was Finn's character. Mm-hmm. So obviously he's a stormtrooper, but he's a good guy. So this this pretty much fit exactly with what we were expecting. Uh, but I honestly I did not like Finn for the first like fifteen minutes that we were getting to know him. I thought he was a fucking idiot <laughs> and just like <laughs> like like a dumbass. Like he here's this fucking idiot that doesn't know how to do shit and he's just dumb yeah why i thought that i i I, 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 i'm not really sure i don't know i don't know particularly why i thought that but i he quickly grew on me yeah and i started to really like him um ray i liked right out of the gate like that girl like she's my girl like i i like her (laughs) she's just she's just spunky she doesn't fucking like there's nothing that she can't do, you know, and she believes that. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just go do that, you know. Like it's, I don't know. I, I like her a lot. I, I like really the fact cool. that they, uh, they both had their their individual hangups and they both overcame them in different ways. Um, right, right. And you know, I really love the dogs. Also, yeah, they apparently they um, love that shit. <laughs> yeah, but I, I the interaction between finn and ray was yeah. it was great it didn't feel forced like i was afraid that it was going to feel forced but it <laughs> um <laughs> no pun intended but it, it really did feel no, very it, natural their, their 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 progression their character development and their character relationship yes. um you could really and, feel that that they you know it was it was a different uh a different environment for both of them they were being thrown into this and, and they weren't quite sure right. what was going on um, uh, one one thing that uh, that I will will copy because he said it perfectly. Um, Brian Brushwood earlier said that uh, when they're sitting in the Millennium Falcon and Ray sits down at the controls and Finn sits down in the gunner position and they're both like, "I can do this, I can do this, I can do this." Um, yeah, they were not talking about flying or gunning the Millennium Falcon. They were really in meta speaking about carrying this franchise to the next three movies on their shoulders. Um, and I think they, of course, Brian would say some shit like and, that. And, <laughs> and, and it was just perfect. And I think he, I think he nailed it right on the head. I think that's exactly, that's what I got out of it. You know what I mean? Like you could, you could feel that desperation in that moment with them and their interactions and them coming together right after that. And then talking over each other, saying the same things. And you just kind of knew like, this is a team. These are two members of the team that are going to take us forward. These are, these are the characters we can get invested in. Um, 
Absolutely. Yeah. And they, by, by the end of the movie, they have a genuine affection for one another. Right. And I don't think like a love interest type affection, but like a, this is my new bestie, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like total friend zone <laughs> type, type of affection, yep. but like, but genuine in mm-hmm. both ways. And um, I, I really like that. And I can totally see Poe Dameron fitting into their group. Those three characters are going to be the core that takes us into the next, the next two movies. And I, I'm oh my god! I'm so looking forward to it, and I think they're going to do fantastic. Three yeah. young actors that are obviously extremely talented. I I think they're great. So, they're fantastic. So two more things that I want to mention. First is the development of Ray's force powers, and the second is something that Strengths just mentioned in the chat room. Um, Kylo Ren and his temper tantrums. Uh, which which <laughs> yes. one do you want to talk yes. about first? Oh, let's talk about the tantrums because I, I actually wanted to start talking about that. Okay, so Kylo Ren um, is a little bitch. He's an adolescent little oh, bitch. Um, fuck. Completely... That was the first word that came to my mind yes. when we started to get to know <laughs> Kylo a little bit. What? A, a little bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh um, my God. It is yeah, so. Streaks is correct. It is so very it crazy. It is a He's back to Anakin and his angsty yes. fucking. Yeah, I want it now. Yeah, it's... Um, but yeah. at the same time, I believed it more this time than I did when Anakin was doing it in, in episode two or whatever. Um, yeah. Now, oh, how... Okay, speaking of Kylo, how about when he took off his helmet and we get to see what he looks like with his fucked up hair and shit? Okay, okay. So, so maybe, maybe I'm being superficial here, but if you have a helmet that's this big on your head, and then you take off that helmet, and your hair is this big on your head. There should be some transition there. Your hair should be fucked up. <laughs> there should be some hair falling from the helmet. Like you don't take a helmet off, and the hair is just. That was like the one continuity error that I could not get over. Because every time he took his fucking helmet off, I was like, his hair is still perfect. What the fuck is this, man? Like, how is this possible? What hair product is he using right now? Like. <laughs> uh, that that just bothered me both times that I watched it and both t- both scenes where he takes his helmet off I was like come on mother let's- your hair cannot be that way after removing that helmet uh yeah and then yeah it's just I don't know Kylo Ren is like he's he's the character that I I I started to actually have some respect for when he you know when he did the little f- the 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 bl- the f- blaster bolt stop or whatever you know and he stopped that shit midair and you know i was like i was like oh this is so badass like and then he just turned into a little bitch like the more the more i saw of him the more i hated him and the more i didn't give a shit whose son he was or whose girlfriend he was with or i did i didn't care like at the end when ray's kicking his ass with that lightsaber i was just like fuck yeah like this is Yes, maybe maybe he'll be the de- next Darth Maul, and he won't be back next time. You know what I mean? Like th- this, that you know. Yeah. So, but n- yeah. but no, no such luck. Like he's such a little well, bitch. No, I'm he, so ready for him not to come back. No, but he he's going to. I know, but I'm ready for him not to. Snoke called him back. He he told General Hux, "Bring Kylo Ren with you. It's time I finish his training." Right. It's yeah. yeah he's gonna come back, and he's gonna be a badass. A little- and. Magic helmet hair. Episode nine <laughs> is going to be Ray killing him. I'm pretty sure. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Well, says that, that Kylo has magic helmet hair. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's get back with uh, get, get back to Ray then and her the development of her force powers. First uh, of all, the throwback when she gets the lights. Oh, her hearing hearing herself crying for her parents. I didn't know yeah, what was it was weird. the first time I watched the movie. I didn't know what that was. I was like, what the hell is she hearing? And then the second time I watched it, I knew because you know I, it had spelled it out a little bit better, and yeah. it, it like that gave me chills. The second time I'm watching the movie, I got chills when she started hearing herself cry for her parents down the hallway. That was fantabulous. Yeah. Um, and then she goes down there and gets a lightsaber and has that that Dagobah moment. Yes. Oh, uh, exactly. That that to me t- felt told. As soon as she started walking down the steps, I instantly thought about Empire Strikes Back when mm. Luke went to the cave. I the cave, I the cave. Your failure at the cave. Yeah. Yeah. I I didn't it's, I didn't until uh until the very until she opened it up and saw the lightsaber there. 
I genuinely did not expect the lightsaber to be in there. I was like, what the hell's up with this box? Why? Why? In my mind, I was like, why would she look at this box out of all the shit in this room? Why the box? And then she opens it up and the lightsaber's in there. I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. See, that was my initial reaction. But then I was like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> it was like too convenient. Mm. Like, how, what? Why? Why would this just randomly be here? This random place that they randomly went to and here's Luke Skywalker's lightsaber? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, like, see, I, but I have I have a theory what? about that as well. I have a theory about that as well. Um So she develops her force powers basically by listening to the old lady and who who we did not see die, by the way. I want to point that out. The old lady with the mega, with like the the super glasses, the four foot tall old right. lady or whatever. We did not yes, see her yes. die. The, She's the, the the lady that seems to know everything about everything. That's like over a thousand years old or whatever. Whatever. Um, yeah. We did not see her die. So just putting that out there. I expect to see her back. She's coming back. Um, yeah. So she basically listens to the old lady in the in the chair and finally gets that stormtrooper to do what you know she wanted him to do. And open the door and drop her, drop the weapon, which is another funny moment, by the way. And uh, I thought that was that seemed a little forced the first time I watched it, and then the second time I saw it, it seemed a lot more natural. It seemed much much easier to digest. Yeah. Well, okay. The biggest thing that I'm curious about is how she got a hold of that lightsaber. When Han was like, whoa, what? How, how, how did you get that? And she's like, oh, that's a story, but not for today. We got to go right now. Or, or whatever the fuck she said. But it was like, I don't know. There's just, there's so much there that, that's not being said. Mm-hmm. One thing that this movie was very good at was making you feel like, you're in this pre-existing world. I mean, granted, we've had six movies prior in in <laughs> countless hours of uh, you know other things, cartoons and books and fucking whatever. Christmas special. But if you just saw this movie by itself, like I, I don't know how anybody could watch this movie cold, like never never being exposed to Star Wars and walk into this because there's enough for the like hardcore fans like us to go in there and feel like whoa holy shit there's so much that they're not telling us Mm -hmm. and they're they they kind of allude to certain things but they don't explain it to us and it's like what the fuck yeah i think that would be very interesting uh very interesting to look at it because we do look at it it, with with tinted glasses you know Um, oh yeah we are expecting certain things and we do know certain things and we have ideas and suspicions if you don't have any of that luggage going into the movie how how is the movie perceived by you you know i think that'd be an interesting yeah because a lot of the questions we have are because we know things that they didn't either they either didn't get into or they alluded to. If you walk in without those preconceived notions, a lot of those questions wouldn't exist. I'm sure there'd be others yeah. though. <laughs> well, right, but I you know, if if you don't know anything about Star Wars and you go in there, they're talking about Luke Skywalker like he's this legendary guy or whatever, but they don't really explain who he is, but or I don't, I don't what think he is. I don't think they need to though, because just just saying that he's legendary and that you're looking for him, whatever else, I think that builds up the fact that you know you're building up to holy shit, like he he's important, like they build well, that sure, up. Sure, sure, but, but at the end, that end scene that that J.J. Abrams felt needed to be 15 minutes long of Ray and Luke standing there like statues staring at each other. Uh, it would have meant nothing, I think, to the to the noob that doesn't know what's going on. Like, okay, oh, okay, this is that that guy that they were talking about. Why? Why are they still looking at each other? Like, what? What? Why is this happening? I don't know. I just I I think I, don't, I don't think this movie would work very well. I think you're completely on a lore off level. base on that. I don't. What's that? I think you're completely off base on that. But that's that's my opinion. Mm. I, I think the movie would yeah. work work fine. It would just be a completely different movie than what we saw, if if you walked in there with no. Uh, yeah, well, with, it, with yeah, no I, it definitely it definitely knowledge. would be a completely different movie. I yeah, I just I don't know if it would have worked. <laughs> Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, I don't know. Fair enough. Um, It'd be interesting to do an experiment on that one. 
another thing that uh, that, that Strange brought up, man, he's he's nailing all kinds of shit in the in the chat room here. That speech <laughs> that uh, that the general gives to all the stormtroopers and shit like that. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, the total Hitler speech. Okay, see, I like I can I can move past that little Hitler thing, little little arm raised shit or whatever. Um, oh no, I was thinking I was thinking Hitler way before the fucking salute. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was the like <laughs> I I was genuine. You know, you know the scene on <laughs> the scene in Total Recall where where uh, 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 oh shit, what the hell is his character's name? Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character. He's out in in Quaid. yeah Quaid is out in the atmosphere and like his his face is like expanding his eyes are about to bulge out oh, of his yeah. face and shit that's yeah. what I was thinking I was like oh my god like I half expected because when he's yelling you can see his eyes are actually like he's forcibly the actor is forcibly yelling these things and you know his his whole face his eyes <laughs> everything they're turning bright red to the point that you thought of. Of that scene in yes, Total Recall? Yes, yes. When you watch it again, you'll understand. I was half expecting him to be doing that and for Kylo Ren to be in the background, like, force blowing up his head. Like, bam! F- like, it was, it was <laughs> like, no shit, man. Like, when you watch it again, because it, it does this, like, pan in thing. Like, it, it, it zooms in very slowly just on his face. And, he's, and you can see it. Like, he's... He's, he was definitely animated, but I don't know. But fucking oh face my god! Is about to fucking, it, like it was, uh, yeah, I, it was, it was nuts, man. When you watch it again, you'll see, you'll see exactly w- where my thoughts were on that. Um, I was like, holy shit! Like he's he's into this, you know. And, <laughs> but at, at the same time, I was there thinking, if that's their whole army, that's not going to do a whole lot. You yeah, know, where's which, the, where's the which, rest okay, of the first order? That's, that's another thing. Um, so they had this badass weapon, which th- this like planet killing, star eating, fucking thing, star killer base or whatever. Okay, first of all, this uh, was not a planet killer. This is a system killer. Like it was right, right, exactly, exactly. Like this you know, thing, it, like holy fuck. It was right? a dramatic upgrade for you know thirty years of time or whatever. Yeah, but what kind of a challenge did it pose to? The little band of rebels. Yeah, they seriously need to work on these fucking these shields and these defenses. Like they need to get out of their head that this shit's invincible. <laughs> yeah, like all right. So Luke and I were talking after the movie that like we didn't once feel like the the rebels or what did they, what were they called the resistance. Yeah, we didn't want at one at any time feel like they were in, in any bit of danger at all. You know, other than certain characters, like you sense Han's danger. Right. There were certain times that you felt Ray was in danger, or Finn was in danger, right? But the resistance as a whole, like you, you don't once feel like they're going to lose this thing. Like the, the the first order, like they had this badass weapon and all these ships and shit, but they were incompetent, like a motherfucker. Yeah. The rebels had like seriously ten X wings was their entire fucking fleet that they sent up there, and they came back with eight of them. Like, no danger at all. Like, there was no drama in that battle. I, <sighs> there was some cool, yeah. like, acrobatic, aerial, you know, neat See, stuff. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think, because uh, I thought about that, and, and I really think that it's more a situation of if they had, if they had really built in these this huge star battle, okay, this huge massive battle where there's a lot going on and, and you know, both sides were just losing ships here and losing ships there and everything else. I really think I really think it, it would have been like, oh, he JJ'd it. You know, he you know, he, it, went, no, he, he added so much to honestly, it. Honestly I didn't expect a giant space battle. But at he, least give the first order that's what they're called, right? The first order? At least give them some credibility. Like they just seem like some bumbling fucking clowns. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they've got like the most massive, holy god, fucking damn it, fucking weapon. And I, you know, I really hated the fact that this time, instead of um, instead of having a a exhaust port to just drop a damn photon torpedo down or whatever the hell it was 
yeah. th- this time they just had to open up a gash in the side and then fly in there and blow it all up, you know? Yeah. Like it would, it, I, I don't know that, that, that part of it was, it was a huge letdown to me. You know, I understand using the, yeah. the same fucking They're weapon, just, just 50 just times bigger or whatever, but you know, yeah. it, it, having a, this amazing offense is no good if you can't, you know, if you can't, you can't stop a, it. Yeah. If you can't defend it, you know? Uh, right. Yeah. So, all right. What else you got? What else you got on the movie, man? What, what else? You, are, <sighs> what are your thoughts? You know, I, that's all I've got right now, man. I, d- I just want to say I'm so happy right now. I, like, I, I stated some critiques that I had for the movie or whatever, but none of that matters. None of it matters. Not, not any of it. It's an absolute amazing piece of film and – I'm going to see this about 700 more times. I'm not even kidding. Like this is, I know the feels won't be the same as the first time that I watched it, but I know that I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to still continue to love it and I'm going to pick it apart even more. I'm sure the more I watch it, but I, it's so good. So yeah. good. Uh, bringing in the old for the nostalgia, linking it to the new and the new presenting something fresh and something Something different yet still Star Wars. It's oh, it's so good. This this movie is so much better than the prequels. God damn it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um, so good. I am just going to close out by saying uh, uh, two words to hark on, on something that you had mentioned last time we talked about the movies and, and about the experience and everything else. Mm. John Williams. Yeah. Oh, oh, all right. This is more of a critique on my part. There, there was no memorable piece of music. Like the music was present, and I enjoyed that it was there. But you know, like how okay, we talk shit about Episode One, right? The shittiest, easily the shittiest of all the Star Wars movie to, to come so far. The Duel of the Fates song when Darth Maul and Obi Wan and Qui Gon Qui Gon were fighting. That piece of music, I can still hear it in my head right now. Like, it was amazing. I knew it from the start. Like, as soon as I heard it, it's been in my head since then. So, like, I, 16 years, that piece of music's been in my head. I cannot pick out more than five notes in a row from The Force Awakens. Nothing, uh, sti- nothing stood out. I, I think there's a, there were a lot of things that stood out. I just don't think that they were the big tracks like, uh, like you know, had been previously done. I think it was more... Um, it was more of an environmental thing because the music never stopped. There was never oh, a scene in the yeah, whole movie it, where it there definitely was, set know, the environment, but um, there was nothing. Um, which I didn't. The, the only I, I didn't expect. Ahead. I didn't expect there to be you know amazing tracks. I don't expect every soundtrack to be the fucking the soundtrack to to Civilization Four, where I can sit there and just play it on on you know play the CD in the truck forever and ever and ever. Um, I oh maybe my expectations are too high because all six previous movies had that. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't I, know. You know. I don't know. Maybe on second viewing, I'll I'll pick up on I, it. I think uh, I think it harkened to a lot of the, a lot of the previous where it, it flowed very naturally when when they showed Vader's mask. Which how the fuck did they get Vader's mask? Okay. So um. Anyway, continuity error. Um. <laughs> oh, why is it a continuity error? That's just it happened off screen. That's easy. It was all melted to shit, like it was set on fire, which. Luke set it on fire and left it alone in the fucking woods. Okay. Anyway, so um, when when they, when they cut to that scene, it went to the Emperor's March, and it, it, the Emperor's March like faded into the music. It blended in and then blended right back out. You don't remember that? I remember very yeah, I would, distinctly. Well, I would I would say ish, like ish. kinda. So, okay, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I'll you I. I Go watch the fucking movie again, like right now. Like, yeah, I like, did watch it. Again. I, I'm sure <laughs> you I missed a lot. Got to watch it again. Okay, the only thing that sticks out of my head from the movie actually is when Leia and Ray were hugging, and there was a variation of Leia's theme hmm. from the original trilogy. That's the only piece. So who do you think the, Ray is you know, then? The in- huh? <clears throat> who do you think Ray is? Do you think she's um, Luke's daughter? Do you think she's just some random? No, you I'm know. leaning toward it being Luke's daughter right now. There was still the idea that it might be Kylo's sister or something like that because 
we're not told that it's not. Right. Um, but it just feels wrong that I don't think Khan and Leia would just dump a little girl off on a planet and leave. Yeah, I know. Like, uh, that just felt, I don't know. Um, but maybe it's Luke's daughter. Maybe Luke's significant other, I don't know, wife, I don't know, uh, Ray's mother, uh, like, took the child and dumped her off on that planet. Or maybe she got kidnapped somehow. I don't know. Because I don't see Luke dumping her on a mm-hmm. planet by herself as a, what, four or five-year-old child, whatever. Yeah, um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I wouldn't bet against it, but I like the idea of her not being related to anyone, especially since you already have Kylo Ren, who's related to... Uh, yes, no, I, and, and I agree, Leia. absolutely. It just, it, it feels like, she just feels like she is, though. Like, it really feels to me like she is. Like, there's a connection, not just the Force. There yeah. is a connection somehow. Yeah. That's what it feels like to me. It doesn't have to be, and it would be perfectly fucking fine if she's not. I think I think it'd be better. The fact if that she his wasn't. lightsaber was calling to her, and and the fact that 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 little weird alien chick was saying that this was I... Luke Skywalker's lightsaber and his father's lightsaber before it was his, and now it's calling to you. I uh, I can't argue that. Um, Father, son, you're next. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I, I can't. Guess. I can't argue that. Um, so yeah. the question was raised about uh, how did why why did R two suddenly know how to wake up and give up the rest of the map? Um, Agreed. But strengths strengths in the chat says a simple hi dad at the end would have saved us a lot of speculation. <laughs> 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 um, uh, how did R two know to wake up at a certain time in order to give up the rest of the map? Yep, I got nothing on that. Luke, I got nothing. Did, did, did Luke, Luke like force push him? I don't know. Yeah, I, I've got. I, yes. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I think so because R two went into hibernation mode right after Luke left. Yeah, Luke told R two, "Okay, hibernate until I tell you to wake up." Why? Why? <laughs> what did he do? Why? Because he wanted to remain hidden. He wanted to make sure his journey was complete and that he was ready to go and face. He could have told R two, "Don't tell anybody where I'm at," and that would have been just as good hibernate for a few years like yeah what yeah nah, and, and just that, that just was, like that, just like he felt just like the old lady the old lady with the uh with, with the with the lightsaber she's that old she says that she doesn't use the force doesn't mean she's not force sensitive and or anything else that luke and her don't have an empathic connection i mean she's going to be that old i guarantee she's got some kind of force connection of some sort right so She's holding the lightsaber, and, and this is all con, con, you know conjecture here. But she's holding the lightsaber, and then once someone comes along and the lightsaber calls to her, which could have could have easily been um, a, a, a suggestion or whatever else by someone. You know, there, there's so much. The force is so powerful in this universe that that there's. I can't put any of that beyond speculation. I think any of that could have been possible. Yeah, who knows it. It did a very good job of saying, just wait till episode eight. We'll answer all your questions. <laughs> just wait yeah. till episode eight so we can push you on to episode nine before we answer any of your questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, or that. Yeah. That, that's more likely. Yeah. We'll answer one of your questions and then give you eight more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Anything else, man? Uh, that's all I got, man. Just uh, go see Star Wars again. again. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was so, so good. good. So good. All right. Yep. We got got a thumbs up from both of us here. Uh, yeah, oh, man. Um, and I don't have my window open because, well, we're still in beta. So, <laughs> 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 all right, man. People can find you at, on Twitter at RM underscore Del Noche. That's right. Rate- or if you're a beer guy, you can go to ratebeer.com, look up username Del Noche, you can see what I've been reviewing. Uh, you can go to Twitch and find me on Del Noche 77. I've only been on there a few times, but um, if you like watching people lose historically bad on video games and get pissed about it, that's probably <laughs> you probably wouldn't watch me. 
There you go. There you go. <laughs> Where are you at, man? Uh, Ethan Kane on Twitter. Uh, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Submit ideas on our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. Email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. Call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. Of course, you can find all these links in more ways to support the show and give us feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. We can also get some slag and other ways to support us there. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening, for Kent, for me, for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. May the force be with you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs) 